Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, we're going to talk about the whole body our guest today is Dr. Keith McCormick. He is going to talk about osteoporosis and talk about his book called The Whole Body Approach. If you want to join the conversation, feel free to post your questions in the chat room or email us at info at the core business show, or you can go ahead and give us a call at 347-324-3460. Again, it's 347-324-3460. Doctor, welcome to the program. All right, Tim. Thanks an awful lot for having me as a guest. Great. I guess to begin with, our audience loves stories about the, our guests. So if you don't mind, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm a chiropractic physician. I practice up in Massachusetts, and I'm also an athlete, and I do Ironman competitions, and I was on the Olympic team in 1976 for a modern pentathlon, and wow. now I treat a lot of patients with osteoporosis. Wow. And during that time, just going back, it's been an Olympian, we're just coming out of the Olympics, and uh I remember during probably in the 78 or 79, you had Bruce Jenner was pretty big at that particular time. Tell us about that particular time, if you don't mind, about the Olympics. Those many years ago, what it's like today. Well, it was pretty exciting back then, and I'm sure it's exciting now to be on the Olympic team. But for me, it was Mm -hmm. a big highlight of my life. I remember actually, since you mentioned Bruce Jenner, I was sitting in the stadium, and Bruce Jenner and Mac Wilkins were... Wilkinson was sitting or sitting right in front of me, and my knee touched Bruce Jenner's back, which was kind of fun. It was like, uh, <laughs> wow, I'm really with the big guys here. But it, it was a lot of fun for me, and uh, just walking in that stadium and waving to my mom and dad was pretty special. In 1980, I was trying to make the Olympic team also, and that was a huge, a huge trauma in my life because that's when Russia had invaded Afghanistan. If you remember, and I do. Jimmy Carter said we will not go, and we were kind of dark horses to win the gold medal for that Olympics. But when I was seventy in 1976, I was only 22 years old, and and by the time I got to be a little bit mature, more mature and ready to really roll, then we didn't get to go. So it was pretty traumatic psychologically for me. And but we moved on, and I ended up going to chiropractic school, and. I've been treating patients ever since for sports injuries and uh, now osteoporosis. Well, it's kind of amazing. And, uh, you have people that they exercise to do all the things that they really need to do. Look at Bill Clinton, uh, who, <laughs> run, who runs. and But look across the board. I mean, they exercise, they run, they walk, but the body still deteriorates. Is it something just genetic or is something out of just exhaustion of the body? That's a really good question. There's a combination of the two. Genetics is certainly involved in osteoporosis, but so too is a increased inflammatory index, and that is really what causes bone loss, is when people have chronic inflammation in their body. And that's why all chronic diseases have one thing in common, and that is chronic inflammation. So osteoporosis, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, they are all correlated, and the reason why is inflammation, and that's where people can really help themselves. Is they look at, at what, at how their body is inflamed, and what they're doing to increase that inflammation. And if they improve that, decrease that inflammatory quotient, then they'll decrease their bone loss. And when I say inflammation, I don't mean acute inflammation. I mean chronic inf- inflammation. So acute mm-hmm. inflammation is when you fall down you, or you know you scrape yourself and the area gets red and irritated, that's acute inflammation. But chronic inflammation is when the immune system is all out of kilter. And we have different white blood cells that are actually producing too much of these signaling cytokines, these pro-inflammatory cytokines in their body. 
and it and for osteoporosis at least it stimulates the osteoclasts. Those are cells that degrade the bone and it causes bone loss. And when a person's really inflamed, they're really acidic in their body, then they're going to have more bone loss. Does diet play a part of this whole scenario? It does. Um, it just, okay. Yeah, it definitely does. And we in America eat the w- typical Western diet of a lot of red meat, white potatoes, not very many vegetables, high in sugar, lots of coffee. And these things are all making the body more acidic and devoid of the necessary minerals that we need for bone health. But what people think is, oh, the only thing you need to do is take calcium and vitamin D and your bones will be healthy again. And that's just not true. Uh, Twelve years ago, when I was first diagnosed with osteoporosis, and I was 45 years old, I was a male, I'm an Olympic athlete, Ironman athlete, and here I am with, am with severe osteoporosis. I had a negative 4.3 bone density, and I suffered 12 fractures over a period of five years. Well, there's no mm. reason why I should have had osteoporosis, but I did. And you have to realize that 37% of people who have no risk factors for osteoporosis will get osteoporosis and sustain fractures from it. So it really behooves everybody, I think, to get a bone density examination and to really figure out if they do have low bone density, figure out why they have it. And at that time, 12 years ago, when I was first diagnosed, there wasn't much out there. And that's why I ended up writing the book, The Whole Body Approach to Osteoporosis, because Mm -hmm. that I knew there needed to be something for people to, to read to tell them how you can approach bone loss with other things besides just medications. These medications that are on the market now are wrought with adverse effects, and the safety is in question. People are really looking for a safer alternative to bone loss. So that's why I wrote the book. It really scares me when they give the disclaimers, well, you might have eternal bleeding, you might have developed tenderness, you might have developed headaches. I mean, are these major drugs, is that really helping us? (laughs) It it seems like if I have the risk of having a stroke and a heart attack and a low blood pressure, is it really worth taking that type of medication? Is there something out there safer and natural that the nature can give us without having to take these harsh drugs? Well, it is a little disconcerting when you hear all these ads on television and then they're promoting their medication and then all of a sudden they get a really fast voice and they list the 20 things including death that can occur. So it does definitely make you pause. And for osteoporosis, the main medications that are being used are bisphosphonate medications. And they can be certainly be helpful in certain cases, and they are good if they're used properly. But what happens is these medications are used long-term, and they can cause osteonecrosis of the jaw. They can cause mid-shaft thigh fractures. They can even cause increased fragility in the bones. The bones can actually get more fragile instead of less fragile if, the, if these medications are taken too long. So, so yes, people are desperate for a safer alternative. And that's what my book out, outlines, a safer way to approaching bone loss. And nutrition needs to be number one because you have to realize that these medications don't do anything to make a bone healthier. They only make the bones harder. And it's good to make them a little harder because that'll get you out of immediate risk of fracturing. But then you really need to make the bones healthier. And that's through nutrition. That's through taking certain supplements. Well, first, diet is really important, decreasing the things that make you acidic, that make you your bones not healthy. But then you have to take various supplements. I now have different supplements. My company is called Osteonaturals, and it, it, I produce supplements that specifically target osteoporosis. They specifically improve the, the, what's called the bone remodeling process. And a lot of the ingredients are like antioxidants, N-acetylcysteine and, uh, and alpha-lipoic acid. Those are two really important antioxidants that help decrease inflammation in the body. When the inflammation is decreased, when the 
oxidative stress is decreased in the body, then the osteoclasts, the cells that break down bone, decrease their activity, and the osteoblasts can then come along and improve their, then they can actually build the bone. Vitamin D, vitamin K, good forms of calcium, good forms of magnesium. One of the things, let me just say one more thing about the minerals out there, typically on the market, things like magnesium oxide are common in health food supplements. And magnesium oxide is, a, is poorly bioavailable. Not much of it is being absorbed. So you might be thinking you're taking in 100 milligrams of magnesium when you take magnesium oxide, but you're only absorbing 3% of it. So these supplements have to be good. They have to be using good forms of calcium, good forms of magnesium. Wow. When, it's, when it comes to diet, tell us what things we should avoid and what things we should be eating. Red meat is a real big acid producer, and that doesn't mean you never eat red meat. Red meat has carnitine in it, which is really important for mitochondrial function. That's the cell energy powerhouses within cells. And so carnitine from uh, red meat is good for you. But it just means that you don't have red meat very often, maybe once a meat, maybe once a week, and not that much. But red meat, cheeses, dairy products, believe it or not, are really acidic forming. So I'm not a big advocate of dairy products, especially if a person has dairy sensitivity or dairy allergies. Coffee, sugars, those things that really acidify the body and rob the body of important minerals. What we need to do is increase vegetables and fruit intake. People don't eat nearly enough vegetables, and they think that they eat a lettuce, they eat a salad with iceberg lettuce and think that they've had their vegetable for the day, and that's just not good enough. You have to eat kale and chard and bok choy and broccoli and eat fruits like melons and prunes and raisins. Those are all really, they're, they're high in minerals, they're high in antioxidants, in my website in osteonaturals.com, I have a blog and I talk about things like, like prunes and how important prunes are for bone health. You wouldn't think of prunes uh, as being something that you would take for bone health, but it is because it has prunes. Prunes have a lot of antioxidants. They're really high in magnesium and calcium. They're like one of those perfect foods for bone health. It's just not a popular food for most people. <laughs> but <laughs> well, They're called dried plums now. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more remarkable. We'll just take a break real quick and we'll be back in a moment to talk a little bit more about your book. Again, about the whole body. We'll be back in a moment. You listen to The Core Business Show. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Japan. Again, we're back with Dr. Keith McComick. We are talking about the whole body approach to osteoporosis. It is really common for women to have this particular disease. How common is it for men? Well, about 50%, believe it or not, of women will sustain an osteoporotic fracture within their lifetime. About 20% mm -hmm. of men will. And, when I, and typically those men are over the age of 60. Well, when I was 45 years old, that's when I started to fracture. So um, it's good to look at statistics, but it's also good to realize that 30, about, I think, 37% of people who have no risk factors at all will sustain a fracture from osteoporosis. So it's good to look at the stats, but it's also 
good to realize that any anybody is can have osteoporosis, and it's good to have for everybody to get a bone density examination in their lifetime. I I advocate them when a person gets to be forty. Uh, health other healthcare pr- practitioners say fifty, but I'm into forty because I was diagnosed at age forty five, and I wish that somebody would have told me five years earlier to get a bone density exam. And where do we go get those bone density oh, exams? At, at, at any healthcare facility, and just talk to your doctor. Everybody can just say to the doctor, I'd like to get a, a bone density examination. And if they're over 50 years old, insurance should pay for it. If you're under 50, then insurance won't pay for it, but it's a fairly inexpensive test. It, and it's a good insurance, I think. So it's about $250. And to me, it's two hundred and fifty dollars well spent because it's one. We're all worried about all kinds of diseases in our life, and it's kind of nice to rule one of them out for two hundred and fifty bucks. Wow, what's involved with this particular examination? It's very simple. It takes about twenty minutes. It's non-invasive, so they don't inject anything in you. It's very low radiation. The radiation involved in it is about what you get on a typical day, anyhow, from the sun. So. You just lie down on the table and a machine goes over top of you and and it emits a small amount of radiation that's captured underneath the machine and it says how dense your bones are. If your bones are good and strong and dense, then you your risk of fracture is low. If they're very thin, if they don't have much mineral content in them, then they're gonna you can have easier much easier time of fracture. Okay. And when a particular signs, if you're in your 40s, are there particular signs you should be conscious of? No. That's the problem with osteoporosis is they call it actually a silent disease, but because there are no, no real risk signs and symptoms that are associated with it until a person fractures. And that's the scary part about it. You, I, when I was in my 40s, I had a lot of thoracic spine pain, which now I realize was the precursor of my, was an indication that I did have osteoporosis. But that's because I was losing bone density rapidly. When it, I think when people lose bone density rapidly, they can experience spinal pain that even before they fracture. And but just because a person doesn't have spine pain doesn't mean they're not losing bone. So that is the problem. There's not any real direct signs or symptoms of it. With treatments like, for example, we're in breast cancer awareness month, and um, for example, cancer treatment, does cancer treatment actually weaken the bones in one sense? Yes, it can. And that is a problem. And so a lot of people who are on medications for prostate cancer and for breast cancer, they might have to go on osteoporosis specific medications of bisphosphonates to to deal with that bone loss. But yes, it is a problem. Wow. What you would like to leave us with your book? Well, I want to say that my book outlines a completely different paradigm than what is out there in traditional medicine. Typically now, a person, when they first diagnose with osteoporosis, they go to their doctor and they're immediately handed a prescription for some form of bisphosphonate. That's the typical scenario. But what I'm saying is, wait, make sure that the doctor does lab tests to see what's going on. Make sure that they know how much vitamin D they have to see what the, to have their bone resorption marker tested to see if they're losing bone density rapidly. There's a lot of lab tests that should be done first and then try to work with the bone loss nutritionally. And that's what's going to make your bones healthy. And the medications are just going to make your bones harder. So it's important to to make bones healthier. And my book outlines how you can work with your doctor in figuring out a better way to, a safer way to address bone loss. Perfect. And we can get your book online at Barnes & Noble, Amazon? Yeah, or or my website, osteonaturals.com. I give a discount for my book there and also for my supplements there, too. Okay. And also from your website, also they can look at some of the products you offer? Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Because I I have supplements that are specifically for bone loss. And 
all those years of me trying to figure out why I was losing bone and how to fix it, then I came up with what supplements really help, work, really work. And that's and what it's I never, supplements. Yeah. And it's never too late to, to get started on the Definitely never okay. too late. Again, what's the website again? Osteonaturals.com. Perfect. Well, thank you for coming on to the program. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, Tim. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Again, that was Dr. Keith McCom. Okay. He is a... His name of his company is O-S-T-E-O Naturals. You can go to his website. Also, you can check out his book. And also, he mentioned you can get it on his website. Or if you can't uh, reach out, you can also go to the local bookstore and get it from there. Again, everybody, thank you for listening. It's Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. You can download this episode on Blog Talk Radio or iTunes or one of your local radio stations. Everybody, take care. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.